So here we are in early January uh, 2025, and we thought it'd be interesting to take a look back what's happened in the last 12 months in the oil and gas sector. So let's use our videos of 2024 as a guide to recap what happened in the industry. On the bottom, we will show arguably the world's two hottest oil and gas areas, Namibia and Guyana, and their sort of wider regions generally. Certainly the most popular areas in terms of news coverage. And on the top, we'll show other regions and topics. This is not an exhaustive list. This is our take on the key oil and gas news of 2024. So do let us know in the comments what you think should have gone on this list. What did we miss? So in the start of 2024, we'd done a recap on Indonesia. Had some huge successes offshore Indonesia. Genj North was back in October 2023. And then Layaran was in December 2023. And these were actually two of the largest deep water discoveries of 2023, ahead of those made in offshore Guyana and Namibia. But we're interested in 2024. The area around the Timpan 1 play opener in the Andaman Sea continues drilling activity with Geo 1 in January of 2024. Very exciting region. Then going to probably the region currently most followed, offshore Namibia, in January 2024, Total Energies increased their stake in the Venus Discovery Block. In February, we released our video on Senegal's Sangamar FPSO arriving in the country. And this allowed for Senegal's first oil production. The field came on stream in June 2024. And first gas from the second development offshore Senegal has just happened at BP's GTA field on the 2nd of January 2025. Going back to Namibia, a Mapane 2X was having a DST. And in this video, we actually talked about graph being smaller than originally thought. In fact, a tenfold resource downgrade from April 2022 to January 2024. And we've obviously seen the outcome of that story recently. In March 2024, we look at our other hot spot, where we have Guyana in focus this time, looking at license round results. As well as this, there's the successful appraisal of Lancet fish and the discovery of bluefin. That's the first Guyana discovery of 2024. Other news in March included the mega merger between Chevron and Hess and between ExxonMobil and Pioneer. And this turned out to be quite a year for mergers, including in the North Sea, Ithaca and ENI, and then most recently in December, the Shell and Equinor merge. In April, Trinidad and Tobago were holding the shallow water license round. We report on that later in the year. And offshore Suriname, Crabdagu and Sabakara discoveries were sort of at the development concept selection stage. And on Brazil, there was exploration ongoing in their equatorial margin area. And Anhanga in this region was announced as a discovery after being held up at the environmental consenting stage for ages. So jumping on to June, we turned our attention to the Eastern Mediterranean. There had been a number of recent discoveries in the region and fields starting up in the Western Desert and Kafu 1 was a discovery offshore Nile Delta. However, the much anticipated Orion 1X well that was a sort of Zor-like structure came in dry. The appetite for exploration in this region has remained despite geopolitical conflicts in the area. This is likely due to Zor's falling production and sort of that knock-on effect for Egypt as a country. They've been having to have scheduled brownouts and blackouts as a result of their need for gas. Cyprus's Kronos discovery in Block 6 is looking to be fast-tracked. This is just across the border from the Zor field. And so that's just one example of a discovery looking to help meet Egypt's demand. But that said, the first discovery, Aphrodite, continues to struggle with no agreement 
on the field development plan between Chevron and the partners and this government of Cyprus there. They are targeting FID in 2025 and first gas is hoped for 2027, but agreements need to be made before that will happen. In July, we looked again at the North Latin America region. Shell had been surveying the Dragon Field. And this is a huge field that couldn't be developed due to sanctions on it because it lies in Venezuelan waters. But in 2023, sanctions would be lifted and so plans could go forward and it's looking to be developed via Trinidad and Tobago. The fourth Guyana FPSO is destined for the Yellowtail development start up this year, so 2025. In our July video, we reported that FID had also been made for the Whiptail discovery offshore Guyana, and there are a few other discoveries in the region, offshore Suriname and offshore Brazil, as well as large fields starting up offshore Brazil, such as the huge Mero 2, or the second FPSO on Mero. And down south in Argentina, there's Wildcat Drilling and Gretsch 1. It was a dry hole. Also in July, we look back at Indonesia in 2024. So that in the Andaman Sea, Tangaku 1 was announced as a discovery in that same Andaman Sea region, which is the area opened by Timpan 1. The Natuna Sea and a Ande Lamut discovery had its plan of development approved. And the, also in the Natuna Sea region, the Mako field, which was discovered back in 1999, is expected to start up in the latter months of this year, 2025. And in August and September, we reported on some of the dry holes of Northwest Africa and the fact that there are some companies leaving that region. But we also highlighted the success, again, of Senegal, the GTA field, bit of a similar theme. There was a lull of activity offshore Namibia really with not much substantial news. And similarly for South Africa, the main news being majors walking away, specifically from blocks 11B and 12B in the Utanika Basin. Also in September, we took a look at the North Sea, the stark difference between Norway and the UK in terms of drilling numbers and production, despite similar basin maturity, but different regulation and fiscal terms. And we gave another update on the Southern Atlantic region, where there'd been further appraisal drillings on Hamera, which is potentially going to be the first gas development off Guyana, and there was additional appraisal drilling on the Hammerhead and Lao Lao discoveries. Offshore Trinidad, the large gas discovery, Manatee, had reached FID, and the license rounds were out that we reported on in the start of the year. Not that much interest other than for a block named Modified U, which had multiple bids. Additionally, we report on Suriname, which has multiple discoveries in block 52 around this time. In November, Tamboti was spudded offshore Namibia, and the Grand Morgu project was granted FID offshore Suriname. This is the term for... Uh, the development of the Sabakara and Crabdagu discoveries. And we're finishing off our list with our recently released China review video. Lots more discoveries, lots more fields coming on stream. Bohai Bay area, the South China Sea, and even onshore China. China continues to increase oil and gas production, despite little being reported in our Western media. So some other honorable mentions we haven't talked about include Chevron's Gulf of Mexico anchor field, which is the first HPHT development to withstand pressure of 20,000 PSI. There's been some other major mergers as well. So that's our 2024 oil and gas news in review. Tell us what we should have included. So here we are, a look at all the videos and the geographies that we covered in those videos. Not only did we do these, but we also did some case studies. You can have a look and see some of these. Uh, we looked at Global Oil News in Q1 2024. We tried to figure out which was the world's first oil well. That's proved to be very popular. And we had a series here of looking at major oil companies and activities in and around the UK. And then 
followed up by looking at uh, oil and gas production and reserves globally. More of some of these in coming slides. Now if we have a look at global production, both a video for gas and another one that uh, looked at oil. We looked at North America and we could see how it was growing. South America and Central America flat, Africa kind of flat, Middle East flat, Asia Pacific growing, CIS growing, and lo and behold, the only one that bucks the trend, there's Europe. And we can see that we've got declining production, significant declining production throughout Europe. Can't see on these uh, thumbnails, but in the video, you'll be able to see what each country's contribution is to either the growth or the decline in production and indeed reserves. Now, as well as being informative and uh, bringing news and, and, and scouting information from around the world, we are trying to promote our oil and gas databases, our Trove oil and gas databases, which cover the world and are very, very comprehensive. In fact, we believe that they are the most comprehensive subsurface technical databases that you will find anywhere. It's our Trove oil and gas databases that really uh, inform our videos. We go through and we choose content from them. And as we're updating things, we, we just capture and put them into videos. So informed decisions, unlocking value, that's what Trove is all about. You can see we have databases, lots and lots of data information you can trust. All the data in Trove comes from public sources and so you can see where that information is. We've been doing this for so long we can guarantee you will not find some of this information out on the internet. Generally within a couple of years about 50% of the hyperlinks that we put into Trove or any other database they no longer work. The uh, internet's a living thing and it changes and many of the links get broken and companies take down information, Trove captures it. You can get insights to the data. We plot everything against everything else. You can see trends, you can look at analogs, and you can look at them all around the world in, in similar geological settings. And we deliver value. You can look at all sorts of parameters. We've got information on stratigraphy, on structural geology, on source rocks, on migration, on infrastructure, all sorts of information available in each of the databases. In total, there are 58,000 assets covered in Trove. It is available as a subscription. If we look at other videos that we made in 2024, there were 54 videos in total, and around about 150,000 views on YouTube, but we'll look at the statistics a little later. We looked at the key oil and gas wells in 2024. Basically, it was advising where were the interesting wells likely to be drilled throughout the year. we probably do an update of that in the coming months. We looked, as I said, at the gas reserves and production, as well as oil. In some of our case studies, we looked at an example from the North Sea here in Donan Dumbarton. We also did really amazing fields like Halfdan and some, some very interesting special cases from all around the world. The world's first oil well. Well, we tried to find where that was. Other news, we talked about some of the, uh, the big mergers that were going on, some in the North Sea. Um, we looked at the UK, the, the license round results, probably the last licensing round there might be for some time because of government changes. We looked at things like the general election here in the UK and how Drake's well, a very famous well in Pennsylvania, changed the industry and, and really shaped future activity and innovation. So they're all available to watch. They'll put a link to our channel uh, in the description below and just browse and have a look at some of these videos. So uh, other videos, well, we did a mini series where I was joined by my good friend Colin Percival and these are sort of informative but also uh, light-hearted. We hope they entertained as well as informed and if we achieve that, then fantastic. This is the statistics for, for Trove News. And you can see in the last 12 months, and this was taken sort of in mid-January here, you can see we've had 145,000 views. Watch time, we've had over 9,600 hours of people watching our videos. And we've gained 1,700 subscribers. We're now almost at 6,000 subscribers, you can see there on the top right. And in terms of revenue, well, you can see the number there. Well, I wish, unfortunately, that's how much money we got.
for our videos. Certainly not making us any money and not really paying for the effort we put in. Cost salaries, etc., to, to make these videos, so a bit of a lost lead. We rarely find uh, that we get less than 200 views in a day. And you can see uh, the average here is actually uh, 398 viewers every day. So more than we get presenting at a conference. We are open to ideas and uh, if you would like, you can write to us, you can email us, you can put comments below and tell us what you like what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of, any feedback is gratefully received. And here you can see just in the last 48 hours here, 2,300 viewers with another release of a, a popular Namibia video. And so what are our highlights for 2024? Well, Guyana, Suriname and Namibia still feature some of the hottest spots in global exploration and appraisal. Also development in the case of Guyana. Probably uh, Suriname and Namibia are going to be moving forward to development here very shortly. For the UK, well, we are based in the UK, so we do make a number of videos in the region. Well, it looks like due to political lunacy, uh, the UK uh, government has, uh, has hit the self-destruct button for the oil and gas sector. We're seeing basically the results of uh, some crazy tax hikes and really mad policy decisions, which uh, are just going to hurt the economy uh, and they're not even going to save the planet. Production worldwide just keeps going up. Reserves just keep going up. But that's not everywhere in the world, and Europe in particular, you can see, is in a uh, major decline. Technology, well, technology has improved all over and, and that uh, is unlocking new opportunities, huge achievements. I think the uh, standout for me was the, the first deep water 20,000 PSI development. That's down at a, a reservoir depth of some 34,000 feet and uh, that's in the Gulf of Mexico and it's uh, Chevron's anchor field, tremendous achievement. And then realizing that throughout the year there, there was a realization that net zero goals were, well, slightly unrealistic. Great targets, but probably could not be achieved in the timeline that uh, governments had set out. I think we're going to see uh, a, a lot of changes uh, to the uh, targets in 2025 and perhaps realism and practicality may prevail. So what are our plans for 2025? Well, we're committed to make our data more accessible. We've really struggled to, uh, to scale up. We've made inroads into local markets, but not really into global markets to date. And so to that end, there will be a major news story. It's going to be in our next video, and we're going to talk about the future for Trove databases and indeed uh, the Trove News uh, YouTube channel. We're hoping to continue creating oil and gas video content on significant events and discoveries and, and key regional developments globally, but we also need to cover our costs. It uh, takes a lot of time and an effort to make just a, a 10 minute video and something's gonna have to change as we go forward. So thank you for watching, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, Forward the video, please. The more viewers we get, the more success, the, the more we get promoted by YouTube and uh, various search engines. If you want to uh, write to us, there's our email address, info at firstsom.com. And uh, there's our website, so you can get a view of, to all these databases, where we have them, um, what they cover. There's a lot of information on the website there. So... Happy New Year 2025 underway and we look forward to seeing you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.